Hey everybody, I'm Simon Harris and welcome to the latest episode of the vlog. So you'll notice a few things are different today. Firstly, this is being uh, shot by a professional rather than uh, the iPhone 10 that the vlog's usually shot on. Uh, secondly, I'm dressed like an adult, so for a change. And uh, thirdly, the surroundings are slightly different. Uh, I'm here today at the Rubicon Summit and I'm going to be interviewing Rubicon Project CEO, Michael Barrett. Uh, he's a lot more interesting than I am, so without further ado, let's get into it. So Michael, firstly, thank you very much for taking time out yeah, and talking to me. Very busy day for you, I know. Um, 2016 was uh, a challenging year for the Rubicon project. 2017 was very much one of kind of stabilization. You came on board. And then 2018, I think it's fair to say, has been one of substantial growth for the business. Um, how do you see the next 12 months panning out? Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, and uh, I think really uh, uh, cogent observation, uh, I think 2018, 2019, uh, the growth's going to continue. You know, we made some difficult decisions. We, uh, we talked to our partners, both on the sell side and the buy side. And uh, first and foremost, they said, listen, we want transparency. Uh, we want transparency in costs. So we were very upfront about eliminating buy side fees. Uh, we want efficiency, and um, <clears throat> that's just not cost. That's uh, total cost of transaction. So we went and bought a company called Entagle which helps with uh, capital expenses on our buyers. It's now helping us in terms of our capital expense, but uh, th that was a big path to the efficiency piece. Uh, they wanted um, a broad array. They, they, in a world where platforms are consolidating, buyers are consolidating on a handful of platforms, they really treasured what Rubicon could offer in terms of a variety of programmatic. So we kind of said, hey, if it can be bought and sold programmatically, we're going to have it on our platform. So not surprisingly, Audio is one of the fastest growing uh, segments of programmatic for us, and video is growing at 70%. We announced that last quarter. Um, and then lastly, ad quality and ad safety. And so the idea was Rubicon's always been known as this kind of bright, well-lit, curated marketplace, and let's double down on that, and let's bring on things like white ops, let's bring on things like moats so that uh, folks know and can feel that they're trusted and that their ad's going to run in the right environment and the, in the publisher's uh, environment is going to have the, the right ad in it. So, yeah, so I think uh, continued growth. Um, you know, this year we've announced that uh, year to date we've paid publishers more than we have ever paid in the history of Rubicon. And year to date there's been more buying activity on the platform. So we... Fingers crossed it continues. It's working. Um, <laughs> and you mentioned the acquisition of Entoggle. I think it's fair to say that Rubicon projects were investing in SPO tech before most people were even talking about SPO. Um, how do you see that driving business performance for the uh, business over the next 12 months or so? Yeah, no, I think it's only going to get uh, more uh, scrutinized. And, and I think that's a good thing, especially for a company that's been investing in it. So, yeah, so from a hard cost standpoint, I, I, you know, we're working with a marketer um, that's tracking dollars spent all the way through the system. And I think it's going to take that level of scrutiny from a marketer to really make the ecosystem behave the way it should, to make it as efficient as it should. And so we're, I think, leading the way in terms of just transparent costs, uh, published costs. And then there's the, the hidden cost of the transaction, right? Sure. Why are you ingesting thousands of impressions you're never going to buy, show me the impression I want, show me what your algorithms have said, this is the type of person I want and, and, and want to buy. And so the, the, the soft cost piece too, I think is going to be a big advantage for us. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now, there's been a ton of talk about consolidation and that going back 18 months <coughs> or so. Um, do you think ad exchange is uh, right for acquisition at the moment? Well, I think that the uh, Nexus purchase uh, validates the strategic nature of owning access to supply. Um, and I don't think that was always true. I think there was a, you know, if you go back maybe two years ago, oh, the buyer's going to go around, the exchanges are going to connect directly to publishers. And there was a flurry of that, but the simple fact is it's really hard to do. <laughs> we run a company. We have historically spent $40 million a year in CapEx. So it's, it's not a, an easy lift sure. to do that. So, so I think that folks are like, got it. Uh, access to supply is important. Access to really good supply is more important. And, um, you know, with programmatic growing at 20% a year, uh, approaching a $100 billion market, I think that uh, we haven't seen the last of the consolidation. 
Okay, yeah, that, I, I agree with you. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, now, final question for you. I know you're a busy guy, and uh, it's a tough one. So, um, there's been lots in the trade press over the kind of past 18 months around kind of uh, practices exchange side, which are maybe uh, frowned upon by uh, buyers and, and sellers alike. Um, how much do you think there's a need for a kind of code of ethics, for want of a better term, that exchanges sign up to beyond um, the IAB Tech Lab's definition of what is technically possible, uh, a code of conduct um, which basically defines how exchanges should behave? I, I think it's absolutely essential. Um, I mean, I think, you know, we publish exactly what we do. Uh, and I think the whole industry needs to... Uh, rally around a uh, consistent standard that if you deviate from it, explain why. A, a buyer might say that makes sense. I'd rather have it done that way. A seller might say that makes sense. But there's no question that in a market as mature as programmatic is, as large as it is, that to operate without trading standards uh, is silly. Uh, you know, I think that uh, us rallying around pre-bid along with uh, a handful of our competitors makes a ton of sense. You know, you get out of the proprietary game, go open source. You can always build on top of the open source, but that's the start of <clears throat> real transparency. And then, of course, you come up with the bill of rights or the, the code of conduct okay. and uh, have it enforced. Have it enforced by AB, have it enforced by TAG, whomever you want. Um, we, we completely adhere to that and sign up for that. Good to know. Well, uh, another great answer. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'll let you crack on because I know you're a ve very busy guy. It was really good talking All to right, you, Michael. Thank so you much. very much. Cheers. Pleasure. Great. So I want to say a huge thank you to Michael for his time. He's obviously a, a very, very busy guy. It was really interesting to talk to him. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for the next vlog where I'll be talking to Rubicon Project CTO Tom Kershaw.